What's good? We're back in this thing. Today, I want to go over how to do these crazy anime-like animations in your music video. I guess it doesn't really have to be anime, but just some really fire animations that you can do. I got all the sauce on it, how to make an efficient workflow, how to make stuff look super realistic, and just all the techniques that you need to learn how to do before you go and make these animations. So if you're interested in that, sit back, relax, click like, and let's get into the video. So first off, I just want to show you guys the effect we're going over. It's this cartoon-like anime animation. I think it's so fire. This effect was actually done by Pavel. He was the contest winner for the Extraordinary Dry Boy music video. Be sure to follow him on Instagram. If you're not already following him on Instagram, you're messing up. Super, super underrated editor. Very talented dude. Be sure to follow him. He won the first contest and the second contest. So before you finish the rest of this tutorial, be sure to go follow him on Instagram. I'll have it linked down below. So in this video, I just want to cover basically just a bunch of techniques that he used here and how to create your own version of this. There's definitely a lot of things that he was using from previous tutorials that I've done and stuff that he's done on his own to make it look really realistic and just overall like a really good animation you've seen people do the drawings before and when they do it it just doesn't look good this is all done digital but honestly it's really really good looking and if you didn't have like a trained eye for it you probably wouldn't be able to tell i'm going to be going over all these techniques that he used to kind of level up that animation look and he also used sound effects i'll go ahead and play it real quick with sound so here we are and you can see how those sound effects really take the animation and just kind of tear it up to that next level with the paper crumbling and the flash effect, it really helped sell the effect. So to get started, what you want is you just want to find a spot where you want the animation to take place. You can see we have this spot, the same spot as him selected on the original raw footage. So now you need to determine how long you want each frame to last. The longer each frame lasts, obviously the less animation you have to do in that time period. So keep that in mind, you're going to have to hand animate each frame, which definitely take some time. So mad respect to Pavel. He obviously spent a lot of time on these animations. I'm going to be going through and just showing one frame because the process is the same for each and every frame. I'll show you the techniques, how to animate it and make it look good, but we're just going to be going through and making one frame of it. So I'm going to decide to do one drawing every three frames. So what I did is found where I wanted it to start and then go one, two, three, and then just go ahead and cut it. One, two, three, go ahead and cut it. One, two, three, go ahead and cut it. And basically however long you want it to last for is how many times you're going to go three frames forward and cut it. So I went through and did it to a decent amount of frames. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the beginning of each cut, right click on your clip and go to add frame hold and make sure you're at the beginning of each frame. That way it freezes it on the first frame here. You can see I go to this right where it cuts, click on the clip to the right of the cut, right click and go to frame hold. And you're gonna do that for every single time you did it. There's a bunch of other ways you can use, you can use posterized time. I just think this is the most simplistic way and easiest way to understand. So I'd recommend doing it this way. You could also just take screenshots, which we're gonna do in a second. I like to do the frame hold just so you can get an idea of what the effect's gonna look like before you go ahead and actually go and spend the time animating. So now when you play it, you have this stutter kind of like effect. So now you can kind of visualize how long each one of these drawing frames is gonna last. So for example, we would have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine frames of that drawing, and it would look like this. So maybe depending on what you're thinking and what you wanna do for your music video, maybe you do every four frames, every two frames if you wanna draw more often. But I think it's really important to kind of visualize what it's gonna look like before you go ahead spend all that time drawing because it is a time consuming process. So next what you want to do is screenshot each frame. That way we can bring it into Photoshop and add those animations. So to do that, you can go to export frame right here. If you don't see that, you can go to the button editor and drag it in to this timeline down here. Or if you want the shortcut, you can hit control shift E. I would recommend just finding a spot on your computer where you want to save it. I had a stills folder inside my project file and let's name this one. And just go through and name each one of them in order. That way you kind of know which frame is which frame. And I'm just using that shortcut, Control Shift E. Then once you've screenshotted all your frames, you can go and open them up in Photoshop. I'm just gonna choose one. So let's find a frame that we want. Can just open it up and see what it looks like. Let's do this frame right here, Photo 8. And then I'm also gonna open up Pavel's version. That way we can kind of reference and I can show you some of the techniques that he used. So first off, you can see he has like this outline where it's not like super close to him. He kind of just cut out like rough edges. And I think that looks really cool. So let's do something like that. To do that, I would use this polygon lasso tool. So it's underneath the lasso tool, but it's the polygon lasso tool. And then just go through, you know, kind of click every once in a while just to make it a little bit more boxy looking. And then once you're done with that, click control J on your layer. Make sure you have that background layer selected and then it's going to duplicate your subject here. So now let's go ahead and make our background look this desaturated look and then our subject look like a sepia look. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. First, what you want to do is select on your background layer and right click and convert to smart object 
This is really important if you want to go back and be able to tweak the different settings that you're doing to it. It makes it so much easier. So make sure to do that to your background layer. And then I'm going to go to images, adjustments, and then hue and saturation. We'll also select it on the background layer still. And then for this, I'm just going to make the background completely black and white. And then I'm going to do the same thing, convert to smart object for our subject, and then go to adjustments. I'm going to go to hue and saturation. I'm going to bring down the hue of our subject or dry boy here. And then I'm also going to go to image adjustments and then photo filter. This is how you get some really cool looks on your subject. So you can basically go to all these filters. They have a bunch of pre-selected ones. Sepia is always a cool one. Or you can go to color and change it to whatever you really want. Let's just use sepia. I like the way it looks. And then you can choose a preserve luminosity or not, I'd recommend doing that most of the time. Otherwise, it's going to make your subject way too dark. And then the nice thing is if you want to change the hue and saturation. So now instead of clicking Control Z, you can just double click on the hue and saturation and click OK. And now you can play with that saturation to see whatever you want. I just want to desaturate it a little bit. Then let's also just maybe make the exposure just a little bit brighter, just so it stands out a little bit more. And you can play with all these settings to make it look however you want. So now we've gone through and did the techniques to make the background a different color than our subject and also kind of mask out our subject like this uh, boxy look. So next, what we want to do is create this paper like look effect in the background. I think it just creates the animation and makes it a little bit more whole and adds that realism to it. Pavel actually killed the way he did this. He used my favorite texture pack. I'll have it linked in the description. If you go to my website, briandelmata.com, click shop now. You can uh, choose between the ultimate texture bundle V2 and V1. You can go ahead and get both of them. I'd recommend the 4K version. That way it's just kind of future proof and you can use it way higher quality resolution. And if you use the code PAV at checkout, P-A-V, I'll uh, give you guys a special discount code on the product just for making it this far into the video and supporting the channel. So now that you have the paper texture pack, go ahead and drag in any of these paper textures. I'm going to use from the rips and folds pack. Uh, let's use this 32 one, just see what that looks like. And I'm going to scale it up so it fills out the whole entire frame. And then I'm going to bring it behind our subject because we want it to be just over the background and not the subject. And now the next step is just to turn it to screen or any of these blending modes, lighten will look cool, screen, color dodge. All these are going to look different depending on your clips. I actually really like the way lighter color works. They're all going to give you different looks though. Let's go and stick with screen. Then right click, I'm going to convert it to a smart object as well. This is just a little bit of an extra of the sauce and you can go to adjustments and curves and you can play around with the darkness and how like intense you want the background to be. You can make it look really paper like or you can kind of remove a little bit of the element. I think I'm just going to bring it down just a tad and then maybe bump the highlights up a little bit. That way the whites stick out a little bit more and something like that is super fire. And then just like that, we have that paper texture in the background. So next, what I want to do is just add a little bit of noise to the photo just to give it a little bit more of that grit. So I'm selected on the background layer and go into filter and noise. You can go ahead and add noise and you can choose between Gaussian and uniform. You can kind of see the difference up here if you have preview enabled. You can zoom in and uh, look around the photo. I'm going to stick with uniform for the background. I'm going to bump that up a lot, actually, just for the background. Something like 17 looks good to me. And I also made sure it was monochromatic. That way it doesn't have any color. And then I'm also going to go to the subject layer, go to filter, noise, add noise, just how we did before. But let's go ahead and use a different type of noise and also a lot less of it, just so it still has that grittiness, but it's not matching the background completely. It just kind of adds a little bit more separation. So next is the fun part where you can go and get creative with your animations and do any kind of drawing technique that you want. Pavel kind of did like this anime inspired look. I think it's super, super fire. He used kind of like real life techniques where he layered the paint and I thought that really sold the effect. So I'll be going over a technique similar. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer in the bottom right and then make this, we'll name this one black because this is going to be where all the black paint is drawn. Now let's do two more layers just following the same color scheme as him. And we can do red and then we can name one white as well. So now what's really important is finding those realistic looking brushes because if you just go ahead and use the default brush in Photoshop, it's not going to look good. So I always like using the Mega Pack from Adobe. It's free for all Adobe users. I'd highly suggest you go ahead and snag it. I'll have it linked in the description. If I forget to link it in the description, comment down below and I'll make sure I link it there. But if you just type in Adobe Mega Pack, sign into Adobe, should be able to get this for free. And the brush I'm using is Kyle's Paintbox Big Streak. I think it looks pretty good. If you can see here, it looks pretty realistic and I just like the way it looks, but there's plenty of brushes that you can go through and find your own look. Uh, I'm just gonna be using this one for the tutorial. Kind of outline our subject in black. I'm gonna make the brush size way smaller. Do a little test stroke, see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit smaller. And you can use the left and right bracket on your keyboard to change the size, or you can also go up here and go to the size up in the top left. And now I just want to bring up the smoothing a little bit. I think just a little bit helps out a lot, especially if you're doing it on a mouse and keyboard. It's just gonna create it's just gonna keep your hand a little bit more steady, allow you to make some more like brush-like looking movements. And let's go ahead and just start drawing on our subject here. One thing I'm noticing right now is our subject is a little too dark. 
So to fix that, we can go, as long as we have that smart filter created, you can go to, you can double click on your exposure or whatever you really want to make it brighter. And let's just make them a little bit brighter. That way we can notice it and then make sure you're selected back on that black layer or whatever color you're drawing on. I like to keep all the colors separate. That way you can go through and change the settings a little bit later if you want to. Another really good thing to do is turn on the scroll wheel to zoom in in Photoshop. I think that's such a helpful tip. That way you can kind of zoom in and move around a lot easier. And a lot of this is going to come down to how good you are at actually drawing. I think Pavel's definitely got me beat on the, uh, the drawing and animating side of things. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing. You're going to have to experiment around with it. You're probably not going to get it your first go. And then just go through and outline your subject or do whatever you really want. This is just animating. So you don't have to outline your subject. You could be outlining whatever you want or coloring in or anything really that you want to do. I just want to show you all these techniques that you can do to make it look kind of like an anime. And then if you hold H on your keyboard, you can move around the canvas without zooming out. I think that's also another really helpful tip. I also want to make the hue and saturation just a little bit less. I've noticed there's like a lot of colors coming through. And then depending on the way you have your effects lined up in your smart filter, you can see if you bring the hue and saturation above the photo filter, it's going to do a different aesthetic or look. So keep that in mind. Now I just want to show you kind of how to stack the colors. And let's choose a color like red. And then I'm going to turn the flow down a decent amount, maybe something like 30 and maybe even the brush size, just so it kind of highlights these areas. I might have to turn it up a little bit. Sometimes when you turn down the brush, a lot you actually don't get the brush at all so something like that you can go through and outline all these different areas i'm just kind of going quick for the sake of tutorial but you can see how this adds a lot of different texture to the drawing itself and then let's go to something like white and i'm going to turn the flow down even more i think the more you stack up the, the lower the flow and maybe even the smaller the brush size just will add that little extra element to it so let's go to white here now you can see just barely showing up. It's just kind of adding a little bit of extra element. You can almost like add highlights and stuff with this. And then let's also show kind of how to maybe do some text. So let's bring up the size of the brush a lot and we'll start with the red as the base. So let's turn the flow up all the way on this. And then for the text, I'm going to make a whole separate background. So let's name this red because this is going to be the base. And let's draw something like similar Death. And I made it below the uh, the background layer, the subject layer. That way it kind of just has a little bit of that depth to it. So now we got death here. Let's go ahead and add a second second layer. And let's make that, that black layer. Again, the lower you go, I'd make the flow a lot less. So let's do something maybe like 50 here, see what that looks like. So now you can see it's showing through and it's just adding that like kind of realistic element to it. Almost how if you were to do this in real life, you would see you know, the color kind of popped through a little bit. And then let's do that third layer, do white, and then let's make it a lot less, maybe something like 10 or something. You could probably even do less, but right now let's go ahead and just stick with this. And then I still just want to make it a little bit more apparent that it's drawn on the subject here. So let's go to that subject layer and add a curves adjustment and then bring up the highlights just a bunch. And you can still keep a little bit of that contrast in. So I'm going to bring down the shadows a little bit. Again, it's going to be all dependent on your clip and whatever you think looks the best. And let's go ahead and add some final things just to kind of sauce it up a little bit more. One thing I'm going to do is bring on a paper texture, a really basic one, and just bring it and drag it over the subject itself and create a clipping mask and then turn it to screen that way it just has a little bit more of that element and we can even convert that to a smart object real quick and make it a little less noticeable and a little bit more contrast heavy i think that helps out a lot and i'm also going to go ahead and control click on all of the layers of paint up here and then merge them and then i would make that a smart layer and if you do some stuff like add noise to it then let's do the same thing for the background death text merge and then convert to smart object and if you wanted to add the same exact noise that you had on drawing layer you can just hold alt and drag it onto your layer down here and it's going to add that noise on directly some other really cool things you can do is play around with the blending modes of the text if you add something like linear or like all these I, you could just go through honestly a lot of them look really cool like a really subtle one like lighter colors kind of just showing up but yeah these are all just different things that you can do to your text to make it look to make it look a lot different and then i just want to do some final touches and then i just want to do some final touches maybe making the sepia a little less noticeable so it's not super super orange looking so now it's just going through and adding a bunch of different stuff you like i think pavel absolutely killed it he spent a lot more time than i did on this but his looks so much better so a lot of it comes down to that animation he he definitely has the eye for drawing stuff. I just wanted to go through and show you a lot of the techniques 
So let's go ahead and say we save this one. Let's go ahead and save as a copy. And then you can just go ahead and replace that with whatever number you're on. So we're on number eight. Let's go ahead and replace that for eight and maybe type eight done. Save as a PNG and then let's go back into Premiere. So now we can play that. You see we have that animation for that one frame. Now you just need to go through and do all the other frames, which once you get the hang of it, I'll show you some techniques real quick to kind of speed up that process and make it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and import. So before we go ahead and bring in a new still, let's just go ahead and save this as well as a Photoshop file. That way you can always go back if you wanted to change some things. Say you didn't like how the text overlay mode was, you can go through and say you wanted it to be like this or whatever. You can go back and change that later on. So then once we've gone ahead and saved it, let's go ahead and drag in our next frame. And I'll quickly show you kind of different things and techniques that I would do to make it go way faster. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the two drawing layers as well as the texture layer. Let's go ahead and quickly make that outline of our subject and click Control J. So actually to save so much time, you can hold Alt like how we did on that smart filter and drag it onto your background layer. That way you're already gonna have the exact same colors and you can keep it really consistent without having to worry about, you know, matching up the values exactly the same. And you can do the same exact thing for your subject layer. And if it's not letting you do that, just make sure to right click and convert to smart object. It will fix that issue. So now you can see if we go and turn off this background layer, it's going to be matched exactly the same. And once we put it behind our paper layer, it will look exactly, exactly the same. So the background looks the same. And then example with our subject as well. They both look exactly the same. So now all you have to do is really just focus on the drawing portion. If you wanted to like animate text, I'd recommend you keep that background layer up so as a reference so you kind of know where it's at, but create a new layer and draw above it. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Just show you a quick example. So say you wanted it to move a little bit, just go ahead and redraw each letter real quick. And then you can turn off that layer and then follow through with all the different other colors. That way it's in a similar spot and doesn't look like it's jumping around too much but it also doesn't look like a template and just keep on drawing. And then once you've gone through and done all your different frames, basically what you do is you would just drag, you would just take and drag each frame that you've rendered out or saved above its corresponding spot. So if you had one done, you would take that image, say this is a done version, you'd go ahead and drag one, you drag two. And then once you went through and did all eight of them, say we went and did all eight just like this, you would have something that plays with all the animations. Obviously, we don't have that full animation. We'd be sitting here forever if I went through and did every single frame individually. That's why I have a lot of respect for Pavel. If you're not already following him, like I said at the beginning, be sure to follow him. But it just looks so crazy when you go through and actually spend the time doing it all. So keep in mind when you're doing this effect, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time to make it look good. And you're probably gonna be tweaking stuff for a really long time before you get something that you like. I think Pavel said he spent over a month on this whole entire music video. So he definitely spent time going through and animating this. That's pretty much all I got for you guys in this tutorial. If you made it all the way to the end, like always i do appreciate you if you haven't already like comment subscribe do all the youtube stuff be sure to follow pavel on instagram if you wanted to support the channel and grab the texture pack that we used in this video go ahead to my website briandelmata.com use the code pav at checkout get yourself a little bit of a discount code it's the best way to support the channel and it's greatly appreciated be sure to follow me on all social medias i'll have them linked down below but that's all i got for you guys in this one peace